Hello and welcome to my first impressions of the Audi GT3 LMS Evo 2 and also the Mugello circuit added newly to iRacing for the season one build of 2024. My name is William Chadwick. I've been professionally, professionally sim racing for the past three years, two years now. And I hope to be able to give you an accurate representation of kind of where this car is at and what my thoughts and opinions are on it. Well, here we are then for my first impressions. This is literally the first time I've driven the car. And I'll talk a little bit about what I think the car is going to be like in terms of officials, um, what maybe setup changes to make. I've literally just preloaded high downfall sprint essentially at every track, especially like Mugello, the new track that we're here at today, you're going to be running high downforce uh, in a GT3 car. It's only tracks like Daytona, Le Mans, not many others that you'll be dropping the wing. So here, you know, at Mugello, I'm expecting a high wing and we'll kind of look at how the car handles from base and kind of give my first my first impressions. That's kind of what this, this video is, should, should you buy it. So, as we set off then from the box, um, initial things, um, it looks very similar to the previous car. The dash layout is almost identical and so is the sound. However, it does noticeably sound a little bit different with a slightly different dash. I'm going to need to turn down that force feedback a little bit on my end. That's how you know it's a first impressions. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's um let's kind of just get into this. I've not drove this circuit then either. Initially feels quite responsive on the initial turn. Um, yeah, it initially feels pretty nice initially on the turn. Uh, brake cylinders seem quite conservative to start off. That's always very important in a GT3 to make sure you're not constantly ending up in the ABS or you're just overheating front tyres. It certainly reminds me of the old Audi. If you didn't know, the Audi and the Lamborghini are essentially the same car, just like they are in real life. Of course, Audi owning Lamborghini. And that was always reflected kind of in their circuit characteristics. The Audi, the Lambo, always went well at tracks that required a lot of low speed rotation. Think Long Beach um, and others where they're like, a, like maybe Nürburgring as well. I know it went well in our, on our recent test coming towards the end of the season at Nürburgring. It has a very positive pitch in on the brakes initially, I must say. Um, definitely leading towards understeer on the default setup. But yeah, um, that's kind of where these cars sit. They're always going to be very good. These mid-engine cars from the Audi group. Or I think it might be Daimler, but I'm not too sure about that. That actually sounds like Mercedes, now I think about it. But regardless whether I've got car manufacturers right or not on who their owning groups are. These cars are always going to be very good at tight twisty circuits and Mugello is maybe an environment where it can be good but yeah uh, certainly that's kind of the the view and characteristic that I have over over this car um, and where it's going to be good. So let me do a bit more lapping, uh, get into it, kind of feel where the car's limited, and then I'll talk through some of my decisions in terms of setup choices, setup changes. Yeah, definitely the initial balance of the car is looking like understeer, which is fine. It's definitely good if you're jumping into this car as a beginner because a very loose car can be quite hard to drive. Um, and yeah, I definitely say that's its kind of suited balance um, of how it comes out of the box, but I know these cars can definitely be quite... Uh, are quite under, uh, oversteery when set up right, right in a way obviously sometimes. A bit too much oversteer is too much and clearly either those curbs are very aggressive <laughs> or the curb riding isn't isn't very good. I was being quite greedy on the inside but yeah, I'm going to be looking to change that understeer uh, characteristic to uh, hopefully get some more um, some more lap time out of this car. Okay, so we're going to go and have a look into the setup, and I'm going to do a few things just to make sure that you can see that a little bit better. So we've set this all the way to 200%, and we're now going to delve into the setup page for the first time. So um, interesting to note, dampers on a different page, very common uh, across certain cars. Okay, well, the first initial thoughts is I don't think I've seen it displayed like that before, but 
I think generally it's essentially the same as before. Um, so just settings in terms of front and rear ARBs, it's set up very soft at the front or almost as soft as at the front and not too hard at the back. So <laughs> interesting really because I, I felt like we were limited in rear traction quite a lot, especially at medium speed. Uh, but then again needed more rotation so the first thing that we're going to look at is maybe adding a little bit of rake is something I'd look at at uh, spring rates we'll see the ranges here they're quite limited on the front going you know you've got just over 100 range on the back um, actually even more limited in terms of not necessarily in terms of range but uh, you can't go as low on the back so I think maybe pff, initially I'll go up a little bit on the rear spring rate um, which will increase our rear ride heights, and if we want to keep that somewhat similar, we're going to need to uh, edit that a little bit. So we're going to bring down the spring offset perch. I'm just going to give it a little bit more rake as well. We'll try and go to a direction where the car maybe becomes too rotating, so then we, we kind of get an idea on uh, where it's at. That is probably half fuel, so we'll leave it there. We've got two options of stacks. Interesting, because... I know in some cars it's actually quite, especially at like the Ferrari, uh, the gearing is quite strange. So, uh, yeah, diff preload um, with 16 friction faces. Okay. It, wow, that is quite the options. So, I did think about changing the preload uh, a little bit. So, I, I might do a little bit of that. And we are on maximum wing position 7 of, oh, wait, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Not many, not many uh, to choose from, to be honest. ABS, we usually turn to maximum. So this is kind of what I'm going to start with and see how it goes. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Kind of tried to improve everything. I felt like the car was limited. Um, slightly changed the, the front ARB just to go full, uh, full soft on the front kept the ride height at the front uh, as low as possible that's always very important in iRacing increase the rake by two mil increase the rear spring rate a little bit decrease the rear camber just a tad will it work let's see every car's different also increase the, the abs because we usually run max abs to be honest from memory so um i'll see how that feels at least <laughs> ah Ah, yes, ABS off. Right, okay, 12 is off. Got it, right. <laughs> also some first impressions on the Jello as a circuit. Really like the track limits. The track limits seem pretty nice, uh, pretty allow you to push quite a lot. Um, the track in general feels really well built, looks really pretty. Um, curves feel quite s slippery, at least the entry curve. Well, I think all curves are slippery. Uh, but yeah, generally I think it's a very very nice track and obviously the anti-cuts are pretty aggressive but I don't blame them for having them there, they're, we're clearly there in real life so yeah, I mean I must say so far I've found this track really really nice and I'm very much enjoying it. Ooh. Slippery, slippery curbs. The curbs are slippery. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a little bit on what I initially did. <laughs> gonna lower those spring rates a little bit back to more or less where they were. What I am gonna do to try and get a bit of exit support is just equalize those bars and kind of see how the car reacts while I do that. Um, the, the dampers, there is so many settings. I really feel like I've never seen this many settings in dampers before and they are very very uh, it's a kind of a fine art tuning them it takes a while so I'm gonna have a little click around with those as well and kind of give my feedback okay so I've started to make some changes to the setup in general um, we, we went through those initial changes that I made I kind of really couldn't get the car to feel like how I wanted it to uh, I consulted with a few people um, few of my friends, some high more energy engineers that uh, do some fantastic work for us, um, as well as myself, obviously I do work as well, but mainly on GT4, um, and the, the general consensus, the initial feeling is this car's quite uncompliant, 
and that's kind of what we're trying and why I'm trying to solve with a few of these little changes so soften the rear bar probably will help uh, with the traction on the exits hopefully and um, yeah I've done a few little other things as well dampers again massively scary at the moment there's a lot of options uh, so I may not touch those them that much um, but yeah I'll do some more laps and get back to you on what I've kind of feel like so yeah I must say this track is fantastic I know this is more of a car review than a track review but I, I, can, I, I can truly say that this track is one of the best added to iRacing in a very long time. The track limits feel perfectly judged. Um, the way that the curbs work is really nice. Uh, just the general, obviously it's a very good track and, in itself, but I think iRacing have absolutely smashed out of the park here with Mugello. And, if there's anything to take away from this initial impressions of the car and the and the track, buy the track. Trust me, buy this track. It is unbelievably good, and it you know I can imagine driving like a W12 round here or something with even more downforce would just be incredible. So um, if there's anything I can tell you straight away, it is buy this track, uh, 1,000 million percent. So I believe I've just made my final sort of setup changes um, that I, I kind of feel comfortable doing um, or what I've kind of come to as an idea of how to kind of drive this car. We, I think compared to some of the GT3's iRacing have recently released it's a bit underwhelming in terms of driving feel and how the overall balance and characteristic of the car kind of lies. Um, I, I generally say that if you're not a huge fan of how the Audi drives anyway, this isn't a must-buy. Um, I think I think it's a good car and it definitely will go well at certain circuits. However, it doesn't feel like it's so good to drive that everyone will like it. If you're someone that loves to drive with a bit of understeer in the car and you really like that kind of feeling and you're not too fussed about the car being massively positive and very easy to drive on the turning, uh, sorry, on the exits, kind of, and letting it just kind of push out and you kind of sort of sit towards that balance. Maybe this is a car that you will really gel with. I can imagine it being quite hard to manage across the course of a full hour stint in terms of front wear because it definitely feels like it's going to be very hard to eradicate that, um, <laughs> that front uh, kind of slip and slot, uh, understeer. Remember the word eventually. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely it's a nicely done model. However, from a driving perspective, it certainly feels like one of the the least good GT3s that have recently been released. It's a great addition to have, and I'm sure at certain circuits like a Long Beach like a Nürburgring, somewhere where it can really thrive, it might do fantastically well and you, you may have to feel like buying it. It depends kind of where you sit on iRacing. But if you're really looking to buy your first GT3 or your second GT3, I would never, ever advise this over a Ferrari. Uh, for example, the 296 that was re released last patch was m much better than this, to be frankly honest. Um, and yeah... I, it's a good car to have in the sim however it's I don't think it's a world beater but it could just take a while to figure the setup out but if you're someone that you know likes to build your own setups this will be a really challenging car for you however you know um, having worked with with Hymo setups the logo in the, the bottom right of the, the screen we have two fantastic engineers on this for the next season we have Alessandro Bico uh, Porsche, Porsche Super Cup driver, um, won two races last season, uh, very, very good driver, was pole at Petit Le Mans, top split, main time slot. Tom Burns, pole in LMDH earlier on in the year, um, he'll be doing it in the GT Sprint uh, series as well. So we've got some fantastic engineers on this for the season and it may just take that little bit longer for us to figure this car out. But from an initial perspective, unless you're a massive Audi fan, you love the old car, uh, or something like this, or maybe you have uh, just an affinity towards the brand and you really like uh, the way the car looks or, or something like this, I'm sure it's a, it's a good option for you to buy, but 
to a general perspective, if you've got this or a Ferrari in front of you, which one do you buy? Buy the Ferrari every day of the week. That's my personal opinion. It's a better car. Um, unfortunately, it would be nice to sing praises of um, of this car, but it just doesn't quite do it for me, at least. I'm, I'm someone that really likes a nice front end, and it does feel like this car kind of lacks that and it's, it's been really hard for me to tune it out. I, I think I've got the setup to a decent place, especially for a day one set. Um, so do check that out. I will be having a link in the description to Track Titan. And if I'm not able to get the setup uh, loaded, um, I'll put some screenshots in at the end of the video and stuff. So I'll have some screenshots there. There'll be data and telemetry uh, you'll be able to compare to on Track Titan. So I'll have a session uh, that you can, you can go and look at. And yeah, that would be my initial impressions at least. I'm going to do a bit more hot lapping, a bit more understanding of, of this track and finish this video off with a nice little hot lap for you to be able to watch uh, and maybe learn some tips and tricks about this track or, or even car. Just before we get to that uh, hot lap, um, I'll just show you kind of where I've made this car work for me and uh, kind of what I've done to it. So. You can see front bar is quite soft um, in comparison to the rear. This is this page, you can pause and take a look at it. And this is what I did to the dampers. Um, and that for me worked fairly well. Um, although it does still have those underlying issues that I identified uh, in my kind of overarching analysis of whether you should buy the car. Um, but please, do uh, put what you think in the comments if you've drove the car what you kind of think about it if this really puts you off the car or, or something like that and um, enjoy the hot lap New for you. Thank you for watching then this initial kind of review, first impressions of the Audi GT3 car, the new one, and the Mugello circuit. Overall, I conclude that this car is sort of lackluster, uh, one of the more disappointing cars of the last GT3 bunch which had been added to iRacing, and the only way I'd really revert my opinion is if it's it if it really finds a lot of development in the setup and uh, maybe the new tyre model is kind of limiting it as well, the very small changes to the GT3 tyre which have been made. Maybe they're bigger than I, I anticipate. But thank you for watching. Please check out Hymo Setups where we will be providing setups for this car all season long on Track Titan and there will be a link in the description below as well to that. So uh, thank you very much, very much for watching and until next time, see ya.